Today I'm going to show you how to take some of the shots like these on your screen now of oil and water. It's a fun thing to do particularly on a rubbish weather day and you don't need specialist equipment to do it. So I'm going to run through some of the things you'll need to do this. Firstly you'll need a clear glass bowl or jug like this one and ideally you want something with absolutely no markings or logos on the bottom as there is a danger that the oil will act like a lens and pull these elements into focus in your image. For the oil element, I use baby oil uh, because it's clear. You can use cooking oil, uh, but you just need to bear in mind that the colour of the cooking oil might affect the colours rendered in your image. Next, you're going to need a form of backdrop or background. I use these A4 sheets that I've printed out and designed in Photoshop. But anything colourful like a book or cover would work. It is some trial and error as to what works and depends on the distance between the surface of the water and where the droplets of oil will be situated and the background itself. I found this rainbow image works particularly well because the depth of field that you're working at means the lines between these colours are, blur are completely blurred out and you get a nice transition between the colours. Lastly, you need a knife or a spoon and that's just to stir the oil up as it's got a tendency to want to clump together. So here you can see part of the setup. Um, this is optional, but you can see that I've placed my bowl on an old sheet of glass from a photo frame to raise it above the background. This has a couple of benefits in that it protects the background from getting wet. But more importantly, it enables me to aim some light, which you can see here, um, onto the background and reflect back up towards the light and the camera. By not having the bowl sitting on the background, I can also move the background while shooting. And if I have a particularly nice combination of oil droplets, I can try different backgrounds without disturbing the bowl and then, and in essence, disturbing the droplets. I can easily move the, the background out and, and change it with another background. On the subject of lighting, I'm just using one continuous LED light uh, behind the bowl. And as I said, this is pointing slightly down towards the background. So I'm essentially lighting the background rather than the oil directly. And this helps get some really punchy colors. I'll come on to camera settings, but I use the light at full power to keep my ISO down as much as possible. So I have plugged my LED in um, rather than running off of battery power um, because the batteries will drain, uh, drain pretty quick. You could of course use flash but I found continuous light easier to see what I'm shooting. Often I'm looking through the viewfinder before hitting the shutter. If I were using the flash I might not be able to see the oil, oil clearly in dim light. A tripod isn't essential, but will make life easier. You'll be shooting at shallow depths of field, so your margin for movement is very small. And shooting handheld, you might need to bump up your ISO to compensate. You will see my camera is parallel to the bowl. If it was at an angle, I will encounter issues with parts of the image being out of focus due to the shallow depth of field. The oil droplets are pretty small, so a macro lens or a lens with some extension tubes will do the job. Here I'm using a 105mm macro lens on a full frame camera. I'm also using a remote to avoid camera shake. In terms of camera settings, I try to shoot around 200 or 300 of a second because I find the oil will move around. My aperture is set to around f4. The shallow depth of field helps throw the background out of focus, but also gives nice clean circles for an abstract look. Aperture will depend on your focal length, D 
distance to the surface of the water and distance to the background. So you'll need to find what works for you. With my aperture and shutter speed set, relatively constant, I then adjust my ISO to achieve a well exposed image. So now everything is set up, we can try and get some images of the oil. Firstly, we need some water. For this, I use some warm water as I've found the oil clumps together less. In cold water, the oil tends to clump together more quickly. If you have your water already and you're not ready to shoot, it's worth covering with the water with a sheet of paper. This will stop any dust or lint landing on the surface of the water, which will be visible in your images. Once you're ready to shoot, you can add the oil. This is where your spoon or knife comes into handy to stir your mixture up and stop the oil clumping to form smaller droplets. Whilst the oil is settling, you can use this time to focus. I use manual focus to avoid the camera hunting for focus. Because you're shooting parallel once you have achieved focus, you shouldn't need to keep adjusting. 